This month's mini goes out to my Math Counts friends in Hawaii. Not only did they get me this shirt, but they brought me some chocolate-covered macadamia nuts. Love the shirt. Chocolates were awesome, but next year, how about a plane ticket? All right, here we go. Steph is playing basketball with his brother. He scores 29 points on 12 successful baskets. Now, this is Steph, so you know he's putting in twos and threes, and we have to figure out how many threes he made. We're going to break out our usual strategy for a word problem. We're going to turn all these words into some algebra. We're looking for the number of three-pointers Steph made, so we need a variable for that. We're not going to choose T, because T could stand for two or for three. I'm going to choose H. H is the number of threes. Now, Steph dropped in H3s. He made 12 baskets total. That means the other 12 minus H must have been twos. So now we have an expression for the threes. We have an expression for the twos. We're going to put these together, make an expression for all the points. These H3s are worth three H points. These 12 minus H2s are worth 2 times 12 minus h points. We put these together, it gives us a total of 29 points. So now we have an equation that we can solve for h. We're going to first expand that product. 2 times 12 is 24, minus 2 times h. And all this still equals 29. Now we'll simplify the left-hand side. 3h minus 2h gives us h plus 24 equals 29, which tells us that h has to be 5. So now our algebra worked really nicely there, but there's a slick way to solve this problem without writing any algebra at all. Just guess the answer. Use a little trial and error and then just adjust our guess based on our observations. Let's imagine that every time Steph gets the rock, he just blows by his brother, lays the ball in, gets a two-pointer does this every single time. So he gets 12 two-pointers, that's 24 points. But we know he got 29 points. So he couldn't possibly have just gotten a layup every time. He must have held back. Every once in a while, instead of taking the ball to the hole, he stepped back, dropped in a three. So every time he gives up a layup and takes a three, instead he goes from a two-pointer up to a three-pointer. He gains one point. So to get from 24 up to 29, he has to do this five times. Give up that layup, step back, and shoot the three-pointer. That's five three-pointers. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Hope we can find a slick solution to this one. Ivory writes down three two-digit numbers. Each has units digit seven. Then the tens digit of the product of these three numbers is five. We have to figure out the tens digit of the sum of the three numbers. Well, you see a slick solution to this one? I don't. We could try some trial and error. Pick three two-digit numbers that end in seven, multiply them together, see if we get lucky. If we don't, then maybe adjust and multiply. Uh, so I don't want to do that. I don't want to multiply a bunch of two-digit numbers over and over and over again. I'll be here forever. Now, I don't see the slick solution. If you do, give me a shout. I'd love to hear it. But I'm going to break out the algebra. First, we have to write down these two-digit numbers with units digit 7. Start with the first one, we'll just call that 10a plus 7, where a is that tens digit. So if a is 5, then this number is 57. So the second two digit number with units digit 7 will be 10b plus 7. Naturally, the third will be 10c plus 7. So there's my product. We need to multiply this all out. Now we could break out the distributive property, multiply, multiply, multiply. I like to visualize what's going on here. I'm multiplying three expressions there. I can think of this as finding the volume of a rectangular prism with these three numbers as the dimensions. So there's my rectangular prism, and I'll say this dimension there is 10a plus 7. This dimension going up and down, I'm going to call that 10b plus 7. And this dimension going that way, we're going to call that 10c plus 7. Now I'm going to split each of these dimensions up. I'm going to split this one up into 10a 
and 7. Going up and down here, split that up into 10B and 7. And naturally, we'll do the same thing up here. Split this into 10C and 7. So what we've done with our rectangular prism, we can continue it over here, is we've broken our rectangular prism up into eight pieces. We have four up front, four in the back. And then we add up all those eight pieces, we get the whole thing. Now to find the volume of any one of these eight pieces, we're taking one of these two down here, one of the things in this dimension, one of the things in this direction, and one in this direction. For example, this piece right there, we've got 7 times 10A times 10C. So we see that to find the volume of this whole prism, we take every possible combination. One of these, one of these, one of these. And that'll get us all eight of our pieces. Same thing's going on when we multiply these three out, these three expressions. Multiply all three, we get the volume of the whole thing. But we can think of this as broken up into these eight pieces. Take one of these two times one of these two times one of these two. Take every possible combination, and we will get all of the expressions that come out in our product, in the volume of the prism over here. But we don't actually care about all of them. We have to keep our eye on the ball here. Look back at the problem. We care about the tens digit. So when we multiply this out, we only care about the pieces that give us a tens digit that's not zero. For example, if we started off taking 10A times 10B times 10C, we get 1,000 times ABC. Well, the tens digit of that is going to be zero. It's not going to contribute anything at all to the tens digit of the product. So I don't care about that piece. Same thing if I go 10A times 10B times 7. It's going to give me 700 times AB. Tens digit is still going to be zero. But it's different if I go 7 times 7 times 7. If I multiply those three 7s, I'll have 7 cubed. Tens digit of that is not 0. So we're going to care about that piece. Same thing if I go 10A times 7 times 7. That's going to give me 490 times A. Tens digit of that is not going to be 0 because A is not 0. And if I go C7 times 10B times 7, that's going to give me 490 times B, and then if I go 7 times 7 times 10C, I'll have 490 times C as well. So we've got a 490 times B and a 490 times C. So these are all the terms that are going to give us a tens digit that's not zero. All the rest will give us zero, so we don't care about them. So all the pieces in here that have a tens digit of zero in their volume, we just don't care about those. We only care about these. And we know that this expression here has tens digit equal to 5. So I have to figure out what's going to make the tens digit of this equal to 5. Now one thing that's pretty exciting when I see this is I see this sum right there. And I know that in the end I care about the sum. So I'm pretty excited. I think I'm on the right track. But what are we going to do here? Well, first I have to deal with 7 cubed. 7 squared was 49. So 7 cubed... 7 times 49. I'll multiply 7 and 50 first. That'll give me 350. Go back 1, 7, because I have one too many 7s there. It brings me to 343. Plus 490 times the sum, A plus B plus C. Put in a barrier right there so we don't get confused. All right, now I know the tens digit of this has to be 5. I've got a 4 over there. I need to add something in here that's make, going to make the tens digit go up to 5. Well, I know the units digit over here is going to be 0, so all I have to do is focus on the tens digit there. I need the tens digit to be 1, so I can get from 4 up to 5. So I need to multiply that 9 by something over here that's going to get me a 1. The only thing I can multiply a 9 by that's going to get me a 1 over there, this right here has to have a units digit of 9. If this has a units digit of 9, then the tens digit of this product is going to be 1. And that's what I need in order to add to 4 to get to 5. So I know that the units digit of this sum is 9. How does that help? All right, here we go. We're back up here, we care about the sum of the three numbers. We're going to add these three numbers together. I'm going to 10a plus a 10b plus a 10c. That's going to give me 10 times a plus b plus C. And now I'm excited because I see that A plus B plus C again. And I have the 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21. 
Now, this a plus b plus c, its unit's digit is 9. So when I multiply that by 10, I'm going to end up with a tens digit of 9. Then I'm going to add 21 to whatever this is over here. So I'm going to take that tens digit of 9 and move it up by 2. It's going to go to 0, and then it's going to keep on going right back to 1. 